Instructions for disassembly of the LC meter M series. Tools required: quarter inch socket set, 916 AF spanner, 316 AF Allen key, small hammer, selection of screwdrivers, flat blade preferably, and PPE. It is necessary to isolate the meter from upstream and downstream product flow. As such, the meter should be isolated via any inlet or outlet valve, and where possible, any air stroke vapor eliminator lines, if an air eliminator is fitted. Also ensure that any donor pump is switched off. And if servicing a meter which has electronic registration, isolate the meter electrically before starting work. Be aware that the meter may still be under pressure. It is advisable to release the pressure from the meter as gradually as possible. A bowl to catch spilt liquid is desirable. A good place to depressurize the meter is from the strainer front cover, if fitted. Releasing both bottom screw bolts on the strainer flange first ensures that if the seal on the flange suddenly fails, the product will be forced downwards, away from eyes, etc. Once the meter is depressurized, check the strainer basket for wear or damage. Replace, clean or renew as necessary. Note, the necessity for stripping the meter in the first place may be due to a problem with the strainer basket. In normal circumstances, the strainer basket will protect the meter from any foreign debris. To disassemble the meter, remove the calibrator housing assembly this is achieved by unscrewing the seal bolts holding the front plate to the housing body. Remove the calibrator housing complete with adjuster unit attached by releasing four bolts. Remove the pack gland assembly by removing two screws. Ensure O-ring is retained with the pack gland. Remove front cover from meter by removing 10 bolts round cover. Note, one or two bolts may have been pre-drilled to accept sealing wire. Note the position of the bolts when removing. Remove the rotor assemblies by removing bolts around the front bearing plate and remove the existing O-ring. Note, there is a pry slot in the sides of the bearing plate to aid removal. Insert screwdriver into each pry slot and gently remove the bearing plate complete with rotors and timing gears. With rotor assemblies removed, inspect the meter housing for signs of damage. Inspect the rotor edges for signs of damage also. Note, there is minimal clearance 
between the rotors, bearing plates and housing. Any misuse will inevitably cause damage. Causes of damage include overspeeding of the meter, i.e. beyond the manufacturer's designated maximum flow rate, failure of the strainer basket as previously stated and overheating of the meter. This can be caused by allowing hot liquid to pass through the meter as a result of the dedicated attached pump being allowed to run on full bypass for too long. To remove rotors from bearing plates, remove screw halfway out of rotor and timing gear. The timing gear and rotor are located via a key and taper. To break the taper, tap the end of the bolt gently, the key, gear and rotor will part. Repeat the process with the other two rotors. Removal of the rear cover is achieved by removing bolts in the same manner as the front cover. Remember, location of seal bolts as before. Remove rear bearing plate via bolts. Gently tap plate from locating pins. Remove existing o-ring. Inspect all components for wear and damage. Repair or replace as required. Meter reassembly. To reassemble the meter, start by attaching rear bearing plate to meter housing. Location via dowel pins. Secure bearing plate to housing via bearing plate screws, but do not over tighten. Insert blocking rotor through front bearing plate, align key in rotor keyway and replace the gear. Replace the drive unit and cap head bolt. Ensure that drive unit locates correctly into rotor. Insert displacement rotor into bearing plate. Insert key and gear so that the timing marks on the gears correspond exactly and retighten bolt.
rotate blocking rotor and refit second displacement key and gear, ensuring that timing marks on gear align exactly. Retighten bolt. Ensure timing is correct by turning rotors and bearing plate over and observing that displacement rotor blades form 90 degree angle. If timing is not correct, the meter will not operate. Fit rotor and bearing assembly to housing. Rotors will fit into rear bearing plate. Bearing is located via dowel pins. Replace and tighten bearing plate bolts. Do not over tighten. Ensure that meter can be operated by hand and does not jam during cycling. Refit rear cover to meter using bolts. Ensure that a new o-ring is fitted in rear cover. Apply grease to o-ring groove when fitting to prevent o-ring from riding out of groove and pinching. Refit front cover as per rear cover. Insert pack land into meter, ensuring that fork locates into meter drive. Tighten screws. Again, it is preferable to use new o-ring and pack land. Refit calibrator housing by replacing four bolts. Ensure that white face gear meshes correctly with Packland drive gear. Replace front cover plate. If meter is to be wire and lead sealed, fit sealing wire when cover is replaced. Finally, refit strainer basket and strainer cover. Use new seal as before.